Scribe Chang's Pan, Translation Series 3 Robert von Hein Geldern was a distinguished ethnologist, historian, and archaeologist who pioneered the field of Southeast Asian anthropology and played a major part in the creation of the Southeast Asia Institute in the United States. Hein Geldern theorized that China's Zhou Dynasty took an active part in maritime expansion. He showed many arbitrary and detailed commonalities between Chinese art and iconography of the first millennium BC Zhou Dynasty and other arts around the Pacific, including the Americas. And it seems that his contemporary, Otley Beyer, who headed the Department of Anthropology in the University of the Philippines and devoted his life to Philippine ethnology archaeology and prehistory agreed with his views. In an introduction to Philippine and East Asian archaeology, Otley Beyer noted, I wish here to acknowledge my indebtedness to the very able work of Robert Hein Geldern. Otley Beyer, who found thousands of nephrite tools in his archaeological expeditions, theorized about the jade-loving culture that may have brought the jade along with them when they migrated, since we have yet to find any source of local jade deposits in the Philippines. Bayer may also have wondered about other artifacts he may have found in the Philippines that made him support Hein Geldern's conclusions. Inscriptions on bronze artifacts tell us that numerous different clans, including the original inhabitants and immigrants, settled in newly established vassal states during the early Western Zhou period. Scholars are in agreement that there was a massive migration over a large geographical area involving a large population, including many Shang and Zhou elite clans during the early Western Zhou period. In this third video, we will attempt to translate the second section, which focuses our attention on one family line that had been relocated to a new land in order to serve their part in the Great Expansion. Section 2, translation of the last nine lines of the Shi Chang Pan. Our high ancestors, possessing tranquil and deep spirits, came from Wei. King Wu had just conquered the Yin. The scribe of Wei, our valorous ancestor, humbly presented himself before the king. King Wu, led by the spirit of divination, commanded the Duke of Zhou to give Wei clan a homeland territory in the lands below, the southern lands, a generous portion within the Zhou capital domain. If this land was inside China, then why couldn't the king just give the land? Why did he have to ask the Duke of Zhou to give it? Could the Duke of Zhou have been the ruler of the Southern Domain? In the Book 21 of the Books of Zhou, we learn that Prince Kan succeeded the Duke of Zhou in his important role. Strangely, little is known about Prince Kan, and there is no indication that he was related to the Duke of Zhou. Ancient text implies that his position and region of rule was of great importance, but scholars seem to know nothing of any territory with which he is invested. Besides, why would the leaders of Wei want another homeland territory when they already had a homeland? Wei. The name of kings were important and said something about that person. King Wen means the cultured king. King Wu, the martial king. The Duke of Zhou's name was Dan, the rising sun, the same symbol used by the Niao Yi to possibly show where they had made their home. Ancestor Yi, our great-grandfather, relocated to assist the reigning lord in the distant land for the grand plan, giving himself body and heart along with his sons, accepting this great work, he fervently shines bright. Grandfather Sin, founding forefather of our clan, migrated his children to be nurtured and trained continually preparing them for the many blessings of filial duties in brilliantly maintaining order across the waters, righteousness in sacrificial duties, grandly maintaining the peace, and filial culture. Duke Yi saw it as his sacred duty to brightly serve in the work of the Son of Heaven. Father flawlessly guided the crops 
and with every harvest struck out to open new territories. In the time of my service, I, Scribe Chang, nightly hold close the values of filiality and diligence, not failing to bring merit during the day. I, Chang, dare not make the wicked mistake of failing to raise my hands in thanks, as my ancestors have done to the glorious imperial rule. Heaven's son made no error as he charged the craftsmen to make this precious bronze ritual vessel. Valorous grandfather, cultured ancestors and father have conferred on me, Chang, the treasured honor of blessed succession. I embrace the outpouring blessing until I am yellowed with great old age, my life singly dedicated in service as scribe of my ruling lord for 10,000 years. May I value this forever. Sima Chan, grand historian of first century China wisely reminds us, those who do not forget the past are the masters of the future. This is the last of a series of three on the Xichang Pan. Thank you for joining us in opening the book of our past.